Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about Hermite's identity, which is an identity that relates to floor functions. I'm going to be assuming that you're familiar with floor functions. So if you don't know the definition, you should look it up and then return to this video. What we're going to be proving is that for all x in the real numbers and for all m in the positive integers, it's true that the following identity holds. The floor function of x plus the floor function of x plus 1 over m plus the floor function of x plus 2 over m all the way through to the floor function of x plus m minus 1 over m, so just one step shy of m, is equal to the floor function of mx. Now this might seem like a bit of an esoteric identity and it's not particularly useful but it is um, just good looking in a sense and it also comes up in Olympiads as well as other math competitions so it's not a bad idea to know about it mainly its good feature is that it helps to simplify expressions so oftentimes we come up with the complicated one through some argument and then we can replace it with the simple one so let's go ahead with proving it. What we're going to do is we're going to let f of x for, well, let's first fix an m in the positive integers so that we're not, we don't have two variables moving around, x and m. So we've fixed m. And what we do is that we let f of x equal to the floor function of x plus the floor function of x plus 1 over m all the way through to the floor function of x plus m minus 1 over m and we subtract the floor of mx so we have our left side here and we have our right side here and we've just done left minus right so this is left minus right and what we want to do is to show that f of x equals 0 for all x in the real numbers if we do that then we're done what we're going to be the strategy that we're going to be using is has to do with periodic functions. So notice that the function that is identically zero, in a sense it's periodic because it can have any period. So if we show that it's periodic with some period, we only have to look at the values from say zero to p, where p is, I won't say the period, I'll say a period. So let's try to prove that it's periodic with p equals to 1 over m. Now this is a bit of a brilliant trick, but it does work out. So f of x plus 1 over m is equal to the floor of x plus 1 over m plus the floor of x plus 2 over m all the way through to x plus 1 over m plus m minus 1 over m and over here on the final term is minus m times x plus 1 over m and this really it's the last two terms that we have to really think about and what we get is the floor of x plus 1 over m plus the floor of x plus 2 over m 
all the way through to I want to be inserting the term right before that so it's clear what's going on we have x plus m minus 1 over m and the second last term over here that is equal to let me scroll down a bit that is equal to the floor of x plus 1 and the final term that we have is equal to minus the floor of mx plus 1. The plus 1's are going to cancel each other out so we get well let's work on just this part for just a second. This is the floor of x plus 1 because we can ex extract any integer out of a floor function minus the floor of mx minus 1 and that's the floor of x minus the floor of mx. So what we're going to do is that we're going to take this the floor of x and put it at the front here and this minus mx can stay at the end. So we get the floor of x plus the floor of x plus 1 over m plus the floor of x plus 2 over m all the way through to the floor of x plus m minus 1 over m minus floor of mx and if you're paying attention you will recognize that this is simply equal to f of x so we proved that f of x plus 1 over m is equal to f of x for all real x and that means there is in fact a period of 1 over m. So that allows us to focus on a particular interval. What we want now is for all x in the half open interval from 0 to 1 over m f of x is identically 0. So let's prove that. Let me rewrite for you what the function is again so that you're reminded of it. We have the floor of x plus the floor of x plus 1 over m plus the floor of x plus 2 over m all the way through to the floor of x plus m minus 1 over m minus the floor of mx and miraculously it's going to turn out that each of these terms individually equal to zero on this particular interval. So let's prove that. Notice that these terms x, x plus 1 over m, x plus 2 over m all the way through to x plus m minus 1 over m they're all of a particular form. The form is x plus k over m for k equals to 0, 1, 2, all the way through to m minus 1. And what we'd like to do is show that it's greater than or equal to 0 or but less than 1 so that when we take the floor of it it equals to 0. So let's prove that. We have x plus k over m. Since x is less than 1 over m, we get this is less than 1 over m, plus k is less than or equal to m minus 1, so we get m minus 1 over m. So x is going here, and k over m is going here as an upper bound, and that's simply equal to m over m, which is equal to 1. And for the lower bound, x is greater than or equal to 0, and k is greater than or equal to 0, so we get 0 over m and this is simply equal to 0. So just to remove the clutter for a second we get x plus k over m is less than 1 but greater than or equal to 0 which implies that the floor of x plus k over m is equal to 0 since that's the only possible integer in the interval uh, from 0 to 1 that doesn't include 1 but includes 0. So 
we've already caused this term to vanish, this term to vanish, this term to vanish, all the way through to this term to vanish, and we just have mx, the floor of mx left. So let's see what we can do about that. What we're going to show is that that's also identically equal to zero, and that's because the x is greater than or equal to zero, but less than one over m. And so if we multiply through by m, we get zero is less than or equal to mx is less than one. And that means the floor of mx is also equal to zero. So we've proved it. This proves Hermite's identity. Okay, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.